Hey everyone, my name is Mike. It's near the end of March and everyone in North America has been in coronavirus lockdown for a couple weeks. Everyone's looking for something to do, including me, and I decided to choose Starlink. SpaceX just launched their sixth Starlink mission, bringing their number of active satellites to around 350 which brings them as close as a single launch away from being operationally ready and starting to offer service to end users. In about a week, uh, Starlink is doing a big exercise with the US military, and then an even bigger one, I think it's in June of this year. So I thought, stuck at home, what better time to explore a little bit about what Starlink is and how it works. Now my background's in security, uh, computer security, hardware security, firmware security. So what better way to learn about Starlink than to try to hack it in orbit? Now, I'm not actually going to try to hack the Starlink constellation. Uh, that would be illegal. But I am going to try to follow the steps that somebody might need to follow if they were to try to hack this system. I don't want to actually interfere with something with its operation, I just want to figure out how it works. So I figure there's a couple different steps I need to, to do in order to actually uh, explore Starlink like this. So some are harder than others. The first one I figure is to be able to find them or at least know when they're passing overhead. I'm on the east coast of Canada, which is a bit north for the initial uh, orbits that Starlink's being placed into, but we definitely have a lot of passovers here. So the first step is to really figure out uh, where the satellites are in space and when they're passing over, and effectively which way I need to point my antenna to get uh, a strong signal from whichever satellite's passing overhead. The next step, of course, is to figure out how I'm actually going to point an antenna at a moving target. Starlink's satellites are low Earth orbit satellites, and they're actually even lower than most low Earth orbit satellites. Uh, the target uh, altitude for this, I guess, shell of Starlink is around 550 kilometers. So in terms of satellites, this is actually pretty close. And for the frequencies that they're working on, uh, effectively, you need a fairly directional antenna. It is line of sight because it's just you straight up into space. But you need to be fairly directional to focus your signal to cross that 550 kilometers. So I need some way of pointing an antenna at a moving target. And they move pretty quickly. Some of the passes can zip by. Uh, because they're so close to Earth, they have to, or they are just moving quite quickly. So challenge two is how do I point an antenna at these moving targets? Challenge number three is the antenna. So Starlink frequencies, the frequency bands, are public. It's disclosed as part of their FCC license but they're pretty broad bands. It's effectively you know, two gigahertz wide swaths of spectrum that uh, they are, I guess, allowed to use. Now, I imagine the individual frequencies within those spectrums need to be licensed as well, but as far as I know, and I haven't looked deeply, uh, those frequencies are not public. So I need a satellite dish or a directional antenna that can be mounted to a a pointer or pedestal as they call it, so that when it can point at the satellite, I've got the appropriate antenna to listen in to see if Starlink's sending anything. Now the official Starlink antennas are not fully public yet, but there's a little bit of information we have. One is that they're about 19 inches across, and I think even Elon Musk described them as a little bit like UFOs on the end of a stick. Now, I don't know for sure these antennas. Some reports have said they will have an actual motorized mount so that they can steer themselves that way. Uh, early plans were that they would be electronically steerable, like a phased array antenna. 
So no moving parts, just electrically steering the beam. Um, I don't have any of that. That's relatively new technology. So what I'm thinking of doing is an altitude uh, azimuth uh, mount for an antenna and then a dish probably tuned to, I think it's the KU band, uh, to be able to actually receive the, the signals that they might be sending down to real ground stations. So that's challenge number three, I think it was. So know where the satellites are, be able to point at the satellites, their moving target, and then have an antenna to point at them. Challenge number four is what to do with the signal when it comes down. There's some information, again, in the FCC filings on what modulation might be used by the satellites, but that's purely just how to extract symbols from the RF. There's, as far as I know, no documentation in terms of what that actual signal would be. So assuming that I can point at the satellite with the appropriate frequencies and actually receive something, there's no guarantee it'll be transmitting above my location. But assuming I can receive something, the next big challenge is actually decoding what that signal is. Now, chances are pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be encrypted, but at least being able to decode the framing and signaling and structure of that signal, I think would be pretty interesting. Now, once the actual ground stations become public, I do aim to buy one, assuming I can here in Canada, and that would give me additional ability to actually receive a real signal and, and observe what my satellite dish, or I guess should say ground station would be sending. But um, until then, it's, it's a bit of guesswork, hit and miss, just see if anything's being sent and try to receive it. And assuming we make it through all those steps, then I think that's pretty far along to say that if I then wanted to actually go and send a signal, I'd have the right equipment and the right setup. Uh, but like I said, I'm not doing that. Uh, SpaceX nor Starlink, neither of them have given me permission. Uh, so definitely interfering with the operation would be illegal. Uh, SpaceX, Starlink teams, if you're watching and you feel like you want some pen testing uh, to simulate what uh, a random guy like me with a lot of time on his hands might be doing, I'd love to get permission, so feel free to reach out. But until then, this will all be fairly theoretical. So I'm gonna do a bunch of videos to walk through kind of each of those challenges and explore those steps. And then I'm gonna throw in a few videos just to talk about my thoughts on Starlink and other commercial space products and just think through what it might mean once this constellation is fully operational and communicating down with ground stations all over the world, potentially. Uh, this will be the first, well, the first satellite constellation of any kind of this size. And certainly the idea of broad internet access across the globe is pretty interesting. Uh, so we're gonna be exploring that as well. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, subscribe down below. Um, like I said, I'm gonna to try to get these videos out as I explore um, and we'll go from there. So like I said, subscribe down below, tune in and follow along on my exploration while everyone's stuck at home uh, fighting the coronavirus. All right, thanks a lot.